Hey, everybody, Jen Hatmaker here, your host of the For the Love podcast. Welcome to the show. I know why you're here. (laughs) Oh, man. We're in a series right now called For the Love of Wonderful You, which is just a fun idea we had. Like, this is 2024 is a intense year. Um, and we just thought, oh man, let's bring a series that celebrates the individual that's out there listening. Um, just our, your wonderful and wild and unruly and fabulous, complicated, funny, smart, quirky self. Um, we wanted to make room for that and to sort of, as best we could, push aside some of those awful competing narratives that keep us so like sidelined and flattened and um, and so much about how we look. Oh God, it's so exhausting. I'm so sick to death of it. Just sick to death of it. And so you guys, <laughs> well, I cannot tell you how glad I am that somebody, I, in fact, I know who it was. It was my friend, Melissa, um, ages ago, sent me an Instagram account and said, you have to immediately follow Celeste Barber. And at the time I didn't know who this was. I mean, that was maybe the best Instagram decision I have ever made. Listen, before I get on about it, if you don't know who I'm talking about, literally pause this show, go over to Instagram and follow Celeste Barber, just so you can see what I'm talking about. It's going to make the rest of this interview make more sense. And trust me, you're missing out if you aren't already. She is, she's a comedian. She's an actress. Um, She's been making a name for herself in her home country of Australia and then ultimately Hollywood. And in 2015, she started posting really hilarious parodies of images and videos of people like like Kim Kardashian and Britney Spears and other like really notorious models and influencers. And they would be like posing or doing a video in some impossible way that only like those very elite women can pull off. And so she started copying their videos and their stills, but doing it in parody fashion, um, trying to look and dress like they do, but with hilarious results. I I can't um, do this justice. You're just going to have to go watch it because I scream out loud. I don't think I've ever missed one of Celeste's posts ever. So all of course, her Instagram account started to catch fire um, because everybody was, she's so funny. And also she's an everyday normal person, like all of us. And so like taking these impossible, ridiculous images and like turning them on their head was just the funniest, best thing that ever happened to Al Gore's internet. And so she almost has 10 million followers on Instagram now. She's been hailed as the Australian queen of comedy in 2017. She won the funniest lady on Instagram award. In 2020, she won the AACTA for favorite comedy performer of the decade. And in 2021, she won a Webby Special Achievement Award. She's got so many other things happening because she's so talented. Um, She's the highly successful stand-up comedy tour. Um, Challenge Accepted went on to sell out three seasons in the U.S., That was also the name of her memoir that was released in 2018. She has streaming platform specials, including last year's Fine Thanks on Netflix. And then this wonderful comedic series, Well Mania, that she stars in that came out in 2023. She is married to hashtag hot husband, if you know, you know, um, who she has known for over 20 years, married 10, and who is such a good sport and gets in on her antics all the time. They have two boys together and she is a delight. I mean, she is one of the things that makes the internet worth it. And I mean that what a lucky girl I am 
to get to meet her. And how lucky are we that she said yes to the For the Love podcast. So please enjoy this conversation with the absolutely delightful Celeste Barber. Celeste, hi. I'm so, so, so happy to meet you. I am, I just, you know, love you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks yeah. for getting me on. Yeah. People um, following you or not following you is my friendship grid. This is how I know, like either this is going to work out between me and you, or it isn't everybody in my entire life adores you and follows you. You bring such happiness to us. Um, also, you're about 10 million Insta followers. That's no joke. Like these are like Beyonce numbers. What's going, what, ha- what in the world? Is it crazy? Right. Yeah, it is. It is kind of crazy. I don't know if I'm quite at Beyonce, but Beyonce's biggest flex is that she follows no one. I love that. Oh God. It's I so dramatic. That. Yeah. I love, I try, I'm like, maybe I'll do that. I'm like, no, no, I can't, I can't possibly do that. It is, it is, it's a little bit crazy. I have to say though, I think because, you know, that number is on your phone, it's not like it's a, it's a place. It's just like in the ether, it's just a number, but it's when I go on tour or I'm out and about in the street or whatever, but mainly when I'm touring and like those, that number translates to ticket sales and bums on seats and faces and, and conversation. That's when I'm like, Oh wow. Yeah. I got, I got a lot of people looking at me. It is so, um, unnatural and it can be so disorienting. It's such a weird life. I was at, um, I was on a speaking tour one time with, a uh, kind of a, a, a group of women, <laughs> excuse me. And we were in an arena and I brought my sister with me and we were kind of right there on the front row. I mean, it was however many people fit in an arena. And she's like looking around. She, she looks at me and she goes, why are all these people here? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know either. Like, yeah. I'm as surprised as you are, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> you gotta love that. You gotta love sisters bringing you back down to earth. Oh no, they don't care. They're unimpressed. Um, so let me, let's start here for the very, very few amount of people in my community who do not follow you, do not love you, do not know exactly what it is you do in the world. I wonder just if you could high level it just for a second. This is kind of your deal. This is where you're at. This is kind of why I'm talking to you like this, why everybody I know loves you and follows you, et cetera. Well, I think the main reason why people know me is because I take inappropriate, unflattering, half-naked photos of myself and I put them online next to um, beautiful models. Um, And I cut through um, beauty standards and the beauty industry standards and the fashion industry and what it is to be a woman and what it is uh, expected to be a woman in society. I poke fun at that. Um, And I do parody photos of those industries. I'm actor first and foremost, but that is how people now know me because of the Instagram stuff. How did this come to you? Were you just jacking around one day? Were you just being silly? Like, I'll just throw well, this up. I think well, when Instagram started a in hundred years ago, um, I just saw these images and I was like, what's, hap- what's happening here? This is fun because, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, with like magazines or whatever, you're like, well, sure, that is a, that is clearly a, a photoshopped image, or, which isn't okay. It is not okay. But you can tell there is a studio there and there is lighting and there is hair and makeup and that that is Cindy Crawford and there's photographers and blah, 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 and that's what's being sold to us. But then with social media it came out and it was like those um, heavy photoshopped, heavy stylized photo shoots were being sold to us as, no, this is every day. This is actually just what people look like every day. So this is what this is what I look like um, dropping the kids off at school. I've got a little green juice. I'm really cute. It's fine. It's like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, that is not what I look like dropping my kids off at school. There's a lot of screaming, a lot of snot. Like, well, I don't understand what's happening here. And I just thought it, we were all really starting to take ourselves, we're well, being told to take ourselves a little bit too seriously. And I was like, no, 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 I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. So my sister and I would send photos to each other and she, and we'd be like, ah, challenge accepted. And it kind of, it kind of came from that. 
just, you know, because it's all on your phone as well. So three o'clock in the morning when you're trying to breastfeed your screaming child and you already hate yourself and you're just looking at these images of going, oh, well, that's not what I look like. Oh, gosh. It just kind of started to come in from everywhere and I thought, no, I'm going to have a bit of fun with this. Not only is it fun, you have this knack for picking either pictures or videos that are so absurd from the models. They're so absurd. They're it's their legs kicking up to close the car trunk. And just so outrageous. Like nobody walks around like this. Nobody, nobody does this in their, in their panties. And those are the ones you have an affinity for. And you pick the most ridiculous videos and recreate them. And I just, I don't know what to say because anybody who hasn't, doesn't follow you, who's listening no, we cannot explain this to you. You need to stop, pause this show and go look at it. And then you'll see, but I'm not surprised at all that it's as resonant as it is. Cause it's, it's hilarious. And also it's true. So that's how the rest of us are. Like this is social media for the rest of us. And it's such a relief. It's such a relief. Were you like this as a kid? Were you funny? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've always been funny. I've, I mean, I can say that now because I'm an adult and I see what that is. But I think as a kid, I absolutely was funny. But that is seen as just being full on and a lot. And I was. I was all of those things. But um, I just didn't know how to kind of channel it really. And I'm ADHD. I was diagnosed at 16. I've been on and off medication for it for decades. So it was just like, well, she's just loud and, and, and everything. But I knew I was entertaining as well. I just never picked the right time because you never do when you're a teenager. No, just of course freak not. Out at all times. We're not yeah, familiar with the exploding. concept of restraint. No, no, um, no, no, no. Did you have just? So did you have an early north star toward acting and performing? Did you know that that was what you wanted? To, you did. Yeah, yeah. I used to dance when I was younger, which I talk about in my new tour a lot, extensively. Um, so I always wanted to perform. Always wanted to act i love dancing i thought i was going to be a dancer wasn't that good i mean i was good but i can only kick really well with my right leg not with my left so it's like well you need to even that out um and i found comedy very easy i went to drama school and uh like to university and i was like i never i really thought oh to be an actor i need to you know be all angsty and do all the deep things and then i remember my first my first job i got on a medical drama actually in australia at all saints one of the actors on there was like, you're really funny and it's kind of annoying that you don't know how funny you are and you, you can't, you're dumbing that down. And I just went done. And from then on, I just really lent into it. I find it quite easy. I find, I find humor and comedy quite, quite easy to do. And I never thought that that was okay. I don't know if it's being a woman where you're like, no, you need to take, make things need to be hard for you. But, um, but I always knew something in the entertainment industry. I wanted to be a Janet Jackson backup dancer. I still do. Sure. That's my goal. Oh, my God. My, That's literally absolute. on my website that that was my dream. Really? It's my, my dream. absolute dream. But I'm like, sure, I've made out with Tom Ford. Sure, I had my own Netflix show. I want. I don't care. I would like to live one day without anxiety, and I would like to be a Janet Jackson backup dancer. That's all I ask for. I love that dream. <laughs> I love that dream so much. It's You know that you have a gift for comedy when you find it easy. Because comedy is actually not easy. I, I don't know if people who just kind of consume it necessarily understand that drama looks harder, but it, it isn't necessarily. It's actually hard to be good at comedy. Um, timing is a challenge and sort of a natural presentation of comedy. You either kind of have it or you don't. And so you have it, which is like you you can't, put that light under a bushel. You just can't, you're too good at it. And I, I can't even fathom seeing you like in, in a, in a murder drama. Oh, I'd, just, I'd love to do that though. I wouldn't mind killing would some you, people. Would you like to, um, to flex that muscle a little? Yeah, I did in, in my, um, my Netflix show. It was quite, it was quite a mix, which is always, you know, any actor's I think favorite thing to do. Um, but yeah, comedy is tricky. I remember um, a while ago, Michael YTT, you know, brilliant Oscar-winning director, um, he said that uh, when you, that comedy is harder because drama you tell half the story, but with comedy you tell the same story and you make it funny, 
which is I thought was a really interesting way to look at it. And it's and it's true. I've see I've there's a real rhythm to comedy for me. Like if I'm writing a joke or for the show or whatever, I, I'm like, no, it's not. I don't know if that's a dancing background as well. It's like there has to be that rhythm there. But then someone like Ricky Gervais comes along and totally throws any comedic rhythm out and says, here's the most awkward half an hour of a show you'll ever see and it'll be so the true. best thing you'll ever see with The Office. That is true. It's never um, impossible to innovate around comedy. And just when you think there's one template for it, somebody comes along and just busts it up entirely. I remember thinking that when I saw Hannah Gatsby too, like, oh, she's just going to do her own thing. She's just going to walk right in and do Hannah. And and parts of it were so tender and like sobering. And then just the next second you're on the ground in tears laughter. So. Oh my God. They're amazing. Genius. That, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, absolute, absolute genius. Mm. How have you found touring and doing stand-up because that's but completely different from acting i mean there are i would venture to say most actors could never get on a stage and do an hour or an hour and a half of stand-up much less have a netflix netflix special it's a really big deal do you enjoy that version of your work what's your favorite thing that you do what's your least favorite uh, writing a stand-up show is my least favorite thing to do because so i've realized well, the tours and things that I've done, that so much of my rehearsal process and my creative process is performative. I can't, like, I'm sitting in my office right now going, oh, jokes, and I know I'll be fine, but I've, it's, it's hard. So I need to be in a room with people and it just be clunky and awkward and there's a lot of crying and then, huzzah, we get gold. But being on stage is the absolute tits. I, I love it. I love I think that's why I like social media as a little bit love and hate it because it's a direct a direct connection to my audience. There's no execs or can't do this. You can't do that. And I really, I really like that. Also, I would say that my shows are kind of a bit more one woman shows than stand up. Like when I write, I've done a few tour, world tours now. And then if if I'm asked to do like a corporate gig or something, they're like, can you just do like five minutes of your show? I'm like, ah, I can't, I can, and I can, you know, I can mix it up a bit, but I can't just take out a section of a joke and put it in. It's a bit more of a, a one woman show. And I think that is because of my creative process where I just have to write it, rehearse it, and then open the show as opposed to going to stand up clubs and, you know, three in the morning and testing out material um, yeah, it's more like kind of an opening night for me. And cause I'm a perfectionist, which I hate. Oh, well that makes everything harder. Doesn't it? Do you, yeah. so you write <laughs> collaboratively, you have writing partners that come around you and you sort of workshop the material with. No, I write it. I write it all. Oh, you it's write all, it all. Okay. Yeah, I see. And then I'll, I'll get it up in front of my best friend, Thomas, who's also my tour manager. Brilliant. Um, and like tomorrow, for example, we're getting in a room together and he's just going to go, off you go. And I'm going to go, oh, no, and just, yeah, spit it at him and have to stare at a wall. I'm not allowed to look at him, all that sort of stuff. But, no, uh, it's all out of my head. Mm. And you've just um, announced a new tour, right? Yeah, Back Up Dancer. It's exciting. It's exciting. You're coming yeah. here. I am. Don't. I am. I start at Netflix as a Joke Festival in L.A. on the 2nd of May. Yeah. Um, how do you find other comics, other performers? Do you enjoy this? It's such a, it's, it's not a big world. It's kind of a small world. And, um, especially at your level where you have Netflix specials and world tours is this is, this is not a long list. Um, have you enjoyed getting to know other performers kind of at your level from really all around the world, I guess? Absolutely. It's the best. It's very, um, it's very sobering for me. It's very humbling as well because I will think, you know, oh my god, I haven't written a show. And you know, people who aren't in the industry are like, "What do you mean? You just announced a world tour and you haven't written a show?" And I was like, "Yeah, I know." But then I'll talk to other comics, and they're like, "Yeah, you never write a show. You stress write a show the week before. That's what we all do." And you're like, "Oh, that's great. Okay, if it just..." And I think that that is at any level. I don't know if that's what Seinfeld's doing. I think he's probably fine, but. The people that I kind of spend my time with at that level now, it's like, yeah, no, we all hate this. This is 
we don't know why we do it. We all want to be a florist. It'll be so much easier. So that makes me feel alone. As long as you know, you're all standing on the precipice of the cliff. Everybody is about to nosedive and free fall in front of a live audience. That somehow makes it feel better. Like, well, I'm not the only one. You don't know if your shit's going to work in front of people either. So good. Good. We're all in this together. Yeah. I'm not the only masochist here. Okay. Good to know. (laughs) Do you have to really prepare? Because I looked at your schedule today for the upcoming tour. But It's a grind. I mean, it is. You are nose to the grindstone for a month and a half, almost with zero breaths. Um, do you have to, do you do like a a tour repertoire? Because it's exhausting to be that on in that many cities, that many days in a row um, with that many people. Yeah, I do. It's tricky because I live, I literally, literally live on the other side of the world. So if I didn't, if I lived in the States, I'd I'd probably tour a year round. I'd go, you know, do weekends, come home, do weekend. I did that when I was living in the States for a while. But because I live in Australia and my family and my life is in Australia, I condense it as much as I can and I essentially go to work and work like a crazy person for however many months and then come home. Um, otherwise, it gets too stretched out. If I... I'll be away for months and months and months and months. And I got two young boys and I don't have any interest in being away that long. Um, so it's usually just like the last tour, it was Thomas and I, my tour manager and I, as I said, is my best friend and I had an assistant then. And I just keep it tight. I really do. I don't, I, we go to work and we, Thomas is incredible. He's very good at when he gets the routing, he's figuring out exactly what it is. And then he'll be like, right. So we need, we've got five shows back to back and you travel on the same day as a show actually I think it was seven shows back to back travel travel show travel show travel show on the same day and then we've got you know a day off or two days so we just drive to those moments it does help to just kind of go we're at work yeah exactly and I'm Mm -hmm. I'm a, a workhorse when I'm when I'm on I'm on I'm I'm happy to get into it I think you know as a mom as well I kind of have to be I'm I feel that I'm quite lucky that with work I usually have to go away for work so I can fully immerse myself in it do what I have to do and then come home I think if I was working at this level out of home I I wouldn't really I couldn't cope how old are the boys my little dude just turned 10 two days ago buddy and my oldest boy Lou is 12 yeah. Yeah. That's such a fun age. And, and they still need you. Right. I know I have five kids and I'm, I'm a little North Whoa. of you. I know. I know it's, I don't even know what to say. It's so absurd. Um, what, what's the age range? My youngest is 18. And so I, I did, I built my career too, when they were in elementary school and middle and, 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 so I remember having to do the exact same thing. Just it's kind of a hat goes on and you just put your head down and you work and work and work. And then you take it off and you come home and you kind of fill a different role. It is possible. Um, but Absolutely. it does teach and you I, how to work smart. Yeah. I just, um, I think because so much of what I do, and I guess what we do as creatives, it's not a nine to five, right? So if I do some work in the day when the kids are at school, then I go home. It is, it's not like, oh, it's off because I can't control when I'm going to have an urge to write something. So I'm like, I'm, I'm never really off or I've had a glass of wine. So I'm feeling, oh, I'm going to write some stuff. So I'm not as there as I kind of want to be. And I take my hat off to women in general, just always and forever women, but and mothers who are at work in the day and then go home and excellent mothers at night and they go back to work in the day and they come home and excellent mothers. I don't know how they do that. I, it blows my mind. My sister is one of those people. She's a nurse. She goes to work. She comes home. She blows my mind. I can't. I'm like, I have to go to the other side of the world and do some work, and then I'll come back home and I'll lie on the couch and watch School of Rock with you. <laughs> totally, it is feast or famine. Um, it's so different when you're a creative because creative work is just not compartmentalized like that at all. Um, nor is it's like performance side when you're on the road or you're in a live event space or whatever. It is 
it is a real slippery way to live. And I have sorted this out for better, for worse, for a lot of years too, and got a lot of it wrong. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's an answer, but I have found also that when I just go, it's work time, I can just, I can, I can work for 14 hours. Like, let's just get it done. Let's go for it. One thing I really like about you, you've, because you obviously parody, you know, this ridiculous body image culture that we were born into and, and Photoshop, just all of it, all of it is nonsense. We're onto it. We're onto it at this point. We have enough media literacy to be able to go. All right, you guys, but you do it in a way. I just don't know this um, as many people that can do this, but you do it in a way that doesn't at all come across as bitter or mean spirited, like at all. It's just funny. I, I know in challenge accepted your comedy special, you, you walked a little bit about when you started doing this and how you talked a little bit about being bullied by the hot girls in school. Um, and I don't know if that has played into it, but somehow your actual life experiences have given you this ability to be really funny about this ridiculous industry without being mean, like which evidence by the fact that all these models that you parody, they all follow you and they all comment and they love you. And what is that about you? Is this just who you are? Did you have to do work around this? I always, always doing work around mm. it. Absolutely. Um, I think even when I was younger, I'd like watch situations play out and it's like, well, you know, that girl, like the popular girl or something, everyone's listening to her more or doing what she says because she's popular. And I'd always be like, but why? I don't, under I don't understand what, like that, that's that currency. I have a different currency. Why? I don't understand why one is better than, than the other. And as you get older, you realize, oh, it's not. It's just how we are skewed to think. Again, as women within society, it's like, well, you know, there's whole industries built around celebrating women who just look good. That's all they do is they just look good. So they're on the cover of magazines. They're the board. They're on the head board of big companies just because they look good. And I always found that really interesting. I'm like, but what? There's other. There's other qualities. Like how I look is the most least is the least interesting thing about me. It really is, and I look fine. And I, I I'm like, it's just a different currency. And I think it's a currency that isn't really looked at with respect with women it's like well it's funny or smart or boundary pushing is fine as an idea but can you be safe and pretty because that's just easier for us and so it's shifting that lens of going there's we're multifaceted there's 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 so many different types of things to celebrate within women and and i i always say I hate the play, I hate the game, and that's what it is with this. There's a reason why, you know, Tom Ford wanted to collaborate with me because he gets it. He knows that I'm making fun of something that he's never made fun of, and because of that, it's quite dangerous. It's quite a dangerous industry if you can't make fun of it. So the people that get it, the people that like it, the people who I've become friends with are – the top of their game in this industry. And they're like, yeah, I, this is, it's silly, right? And I'm like, yeah, it is silly. <sighs> Who's the most surprising person that you have befriended simply by mocking them um, or didn't expect them to come out of the woodwork of this industry and go, I'm your person. Um, obviously Tom Ford, how hilarious was that collab? Just, I, I wanted it to be 100 million hours long. Well, I, I'm furious that it stopped, like ever. And he's ruined me for life now. Every other job I do, I'm like, oh, whatever. It's not Tom Ford. But sure, like he's totally ruined me. Um, probably the, I guess it's the most surprising. I think because he, you know, literally put his money where his mouth was. You know, everyone was like, we love you, we love you, we want to do this, we want to do this, and nothing ever comes of it, which is just more, a little less conversation, a little more action for people. And then... He facilitated it. We worked together and collaborated and it, it was the most incredible creative experience of my life. But 
someone who does surprise me that follows me, I haven't done a parody of them, but follows me in comments, um, Maria Shriver. That is surprising. I did not expect you Isn't to say it? that. Uh-huh. I know, right? I'm, I'm like, hello. <laughs> like, so lovely. So that's the most kind of surprising for me. <laughs> Maria Shriver. It's never lost on me. It's never lost to me though when like Viola Davis reposts or comments. I'm like, oh, my hi, God, what a that's queen. Incredible. No, it's just, that's ridiculous. Yes, I know it. She is so good at curating awesome content. So the fact that she's reposting your stuff is just like, come on, man, just come on. Um, you and I also have in common uh, well, at least for me, is certainly a bit of an idol in her work and the scope of her talents and um, her vision for creation, which is Tina Fey. I just, I, I don't, I'm hard pressed to think of somebody I admire more in terms of she just wrote it. If she wanted it, she wrote it and then she starred in it and then she produced it and then she wrote it for her friends and She's, it's like, she's an endless well of hilarity and creativity and innovation. I mean, I just adore her and you've talked about her too. What's your take on Tina? Oh, I'm, I'm very similar to you. I'm obsessed with her. I have her book, Bossy Pants, that I actually, I, I carry with me. It's like my little journal. I have all, like, I've got notes in it and you know, dog eared pages. I, it's just, it's so, it's an absolute, you know, Bible for me when it comes to comedy. And um, she, great. She's so smart, like so smart and so great at making fun of herself. And that's one thing that absolutely resonates with me because that's what I love to do. And then again, being as smart, the smartest woman in the world and funny. Oof. I mean, that's a gold mine right there. And uh, yeah, as you say, producing things, writing things, putting yourself in them, and then taking a minute off and then coming back and just kind of doing what you want to be doing. I never had a moment where I was like, okay, Tina, that's fucking enough, babe. It's just like, I'm like, where is she? I want more of her stuff. And if I'm watching something and it says produced by Tina Fey, I'll say to my husband, oh, I knew it. I knew it. She's just, yeah, she's, I feel very safe with her and I like that I'm like oh cool if Tina's across it we're good Amy Pohl is the same all of those girls same my Rudolph yeah. obsessed Maya with- all of them Melissa, Melissa McCarthy, McCarthy. Yeah. Oh. yeah 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 those are my comedy queens Kate McKinnon um just there it's it's the the addition of what you just said everybody knows they're funny but they're smart and smart funny is is a harder category um, clever, funny on the note, like that is the type of, um, creativity that I am so drawn to. I am so in awe of, I, I love those women and I love they're kind of leading the show. I just can only imagine how many young girls are looking at those comedy Queens and kind of going, Oh my God, there's a place for me in this industry. Yeah. yeah. And, and there they, really and wasn't, lean- that was a man's game comedy for sure. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. They really lean into women. They're like, actually, what's, what makes women laugh? Because that's, that's, I know that's all I'm really interested in, what's going to make women laugh. And they do that so well, and it's so important to them. So, yeah, no, massive fans. Let's talk about your family for just a minute before I let you go. You've obviously got hot husband who everybody is obsessed with as well. You have made us be obsessed with all your things. Um, and you've got the the boys, like, you, you've got these men in your life that you live with. What are their thoughts on all this? And he is such a good sport. You drag him into a lot and he is funny and he plays his part like right on the nose. And I just, I'm so tickled by him that he's just like, sure, I'll be a part of your shenanigans. Um, and so what are the, and what does he think? What do the boys think too? I'm curious because you you are very notorious at this point. This is, you have a lot of attention and a lot of people are listening to you and watching you and laughing at you and following you. And it's weird. It can be weird sometimes for the normals that live in the house. Um, and so I'm wondering how they've done. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of men in my house. My husband is very, very supportive and he's very proud of me. He's the one that is like, go to work. Like if, if you, 
with the tour, I'm like, oh no, maybe, maybe for this part of the tour, you and the boys can come over and we can have two days together or I'll try and fly. And he's like, just, we're good. Go and do what you need to do and then come back and then we'll organize like a fair, yeah. He really is, he's the one that is fantastic like that because I'll always just, you know, mum guilt at all times going, well, I'm, I'm horrible because I'm leaving. And he's like, do, do it or don't. Like if you want to choose your choice, if, if this is what you want to do, let's do it. He's great like that. Um, my boys are getting older. So actually Lou, my oldest, asked me last night, he said, um, mum, who's more known or who's more famous out of you? And he mentioned someone else who's an Australian comedian and I went, um, oh, I think me, actually, like when it comes to people who know me. And he went, what? And I went, yeah, I think, I think it's me. And I said, who cares? It doesn't matter if you know. And, and, you know, then you backtrack and go, like, what lesson am I trying to teach here? And, he was, and he's like, oh, I mean, you're just my mum. I didn't realise that you were, wow, more, more like known than her. And I went, yeah, no, I eat your dinner. Like, come on. Let's get <laughs> totally. <going. laughs> yeah. uh, it's so true. It's such a funny mix of the the out there life and just the ordinary regular stuff at home where you're not that special. Like you're the lady who put dinner on the table. Um. Exactly. And they, they learn as well. Like if we're out and people want to get a photo with me, a lot of the time, you know, people are lovely, but they're like, come on, if I'm with the boys, they're like, come on, boys, you can jump in. And they go, no, no. And they know, walk away. Because I'm like, don't have photos with my kids ever. Never have a photo with my kid. And they even know if someone's like, oh, my God, and says something to me, they just kind of walk off. And I'm like, sorry. They go, it's all right. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll get older and they'll tell you later all the things you did wrong with your fame. I promise. <laughs> oh, I look forward to it. Get They're excited. kind of telling me now. Yeah. Yeah. Get excited. Um, at one point I told one of my kids, who had been keeping sort of this nonstop verbal running list of my um, grievances against her, the way I was managing my job and my demands and travel and the people. And I finally just said, Hey, you know what I'd like you to do? I'm going to give you a notebook. I would like you just to write it all down, put it in the notebook. So someday I'm just going to be able to hand this to your therapist. We're going to save her a lot of time and we'll just, we'll just hand it over. She can just read it as her own personal research and it's in one place. So document it. I don't want to hear any more about it, but you can put it on the list and I will make sure to get that into the hands of the professionals. And I hope you can heal. Um, and yeah, yeah. And if you need, if you need to put some time aside of when to fill in that journal, maybe you can do it while you're sitting on the business class flight that I've paid That's right. for. Thank you. My kids. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. Last, last little bit here. I'd love to hear what you're feeling excited about. Um, the creatives always have something. They usually have five somethings in the back of their mind that they're noodling, um, that they're like looking at or squinting at from afar, or even in the early process of like, let's start putting, throwing some stuff against the wall. Uh, so obviously your tour is coming up. That's a humongous boulder in the river. You've got to ride it, for example. Um, so yeah, if we'd like the materials got to be there. Um, so outside of that, outside of the impending, um, tour what else are you looking for to or what dragon would you like to still slay that you haven't um well as you said the tour is the big one i do have some big stuff and this is always very annoying for people but it's the life we live i'm doing a little bit of a pivot it's a hundred percent for my audience it's for my ladies it's for my drunk mums that spend time to get babysitters and get their girlfriends together or uh, you know, just not even mums, but just the ladies that spend the time and the effort to come and see my shows, it's for them. So I'm really looking forward to this little big project that's coming up. And you're right, it's always got things, you know, kicking over in my brain. I'm, oh, I had a, mess, a meeting with my team the other week and I was like, let's all remind um, execs and everyone out there that I'm also an actor for hire. I don't just want to have to do everything from the ground up on my own. I don't have the mental capacity for it. So if there's, you know, Tina's writing a sexy script, please let her know that, oh, just can I read it? So I, I'm, I, I like the idea of attaching to excellent projects as well that are already kind of doing the thing. And I've got a few of those that I'm, I'm kind of working on at the moment. 
What a novel idea just to memorize the lines that somebody else wrote. They did it. They did the work. And, and someone who's great and has always great. wanted to tell that story. And it's like, I'm really ready for someone to hand me a script yeah. and a call sheet and I will show up to work <laughs> and I will do that job. And it will be I love amazing. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. You're amazing. And it's so fun. It's just what you bring to the world is fun. Most of the things online are mean. They're mean and they're wild and they're polarizing and everything's bonkers and bananas. And so fun is um, underrated. Fun matters. Fun is um, it's healing and it's, it's a relief and it's good for us. And it also brings us together. And so it's not a small thing when you put on some weird tape around your boobs and your big panties and you prance around in front of your camera. It's not small. It's funny and it serves us and we love it and we love you. And so thank you for doing it. Thank you for just being exactly who you are. You're just really gifted and we're just lucky. We're lucky to get to like be on the other side of that camera and get to see you do what you do so well. And I'm just cheering for you. And I hope your tour is so amazing. And that like, maybe you get it written with a couple of days to spare. That's my wish for you. Oh, imagine that. Imagine when mm -hmm. I'm flying to America on yeah. that plane, having a glass of wine, imagine it's written. That's what I'm I like I this manifestation. Idea. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's novel. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. thank you so thank much you for so being much. here. And I'm so happy to have met you. I love you to have met you. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you. I feel better now. Um, I see oh, my kids right here standing on the porch going, what's for dinner? So that's that's what's next. Oh, that's what's next great. for me. Get, be jealous. That's for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, you guys, she's as good as gold. I don't know how many times I have to say it to you, but if you do not already follow Celeste, today is your day. Go fix it. Thank me later. She is one every time her stuff pop, pops up in my feed. I am so happy about it. She is just so enjoyable and unique and original. And I loved having her on the show today. All right, you guys. Um, more to come in this great series. I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the show. By the way, I'm sorry I sound like this. I am under the weather this week. Um, and so I had water and hot tea and throat lozenges um, during this entire episode. I'm sorry I sound a little crackly. I'm like Phoebe, smelly cat, smelly cat. Um, what was I saying? Oh, subscribe to the show. Go do it wherever you get your podcast and you'll never miss an episode. Um, all right, you guys, we love you so, 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 so much. See you next week.